for the last segment of our pilot podcast episode. Let's go out with a bang here. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple of uh, requests, going to answer a couple of requests that we got from the forums. Actually, these were from a little while ago. And the first one we're going to talk about is putter fitting. Okay. M. Ship from the forums, somebody who's been on the forums a long time and posts quite a bit and who is recovering, hopefully, uh, well from a, a recent injury, wrote in and, and wanted just to know a little bit more about putter fitting and you know, the right process for doing that and, and just to make sure that somebody gets set up properly with, with, with the right putter. We always spend a lot of time, it seems, now on fitting people for irons and drivers, but mm -hmm. a little bit less discussion when it comes to putters. And it, it's got to be pretty important when you consider the, the margin for error in the putt. Sure. Yeah, putting is huge. And, and unfortunately, it's, um, it, it's kind of been dictated by the fact that the manufacturers decided that everybody should have a 35-inch putter. Uh, it's just cheaper for them to make them all the same size, um, and that's what they do. And how they determined that 35 inches was the right size is a complete mystery to me. Um, it's like saying everybody should wear a size nine and a half shoe. It, it, it's completely nonsense. And same thing with the irons. Obviously, we do a lot of custom fitting for irons, and almost everybody has irons that are too long for them. So. Uh, with putters, it's the same deal. Now you're pretty tall, so you you know you may have you may be able to fit into it. How tall are you? Almost six three. Six okay, three. so six two, six three. So you're a tall guy, and a 35 inch putter. As we once we go through this, you'll probably see that you will probably barely fit into a 35 inch putter. You have long arms, and and so all of that stuff when we do putter fittings is based on the golfer's build. But we'll uh, we'll set you up and uh, see what happens. So first thing I want you to do, go ahead and we'll go kind of down the line here. I'm going to grab a. A ball or two. Just so everybody knows, I, I got this putter last year with my putter. The putter I had at the time got broken. When I purchased this, I did not have it fit for me. So I'm actually looking forward to this and see if I've got something that fits right. Let's turn you around the other way, actually, so they can see down the line here. It's perfect. Uh, you actually have good posture and you have a good setup here. So with your putter, the first thing that we would check is just making sure that your eyes are in a rough, you know, decent position, assuming you have everything else is okay. And you're not too bad, but your eyes are a little bit outside, okay? Now what we see in most golfers is that they tend to stand way more upright than you are, okay? okay. Now being really tall, you probably learned because you didn't have <laughs> clubs perhaps that were long enough or what have you, so you may have ended up in a different scenario, but the most common scenario that we see is that they stand really, really upright because the putter's so long and so their shoulders get elevated. And so they get into this position and now they're trying to rock their, their putter with their shoulders like this. So you're actually set up okay, but the, way, the, the trick for this is we actually, let me borrow that from you. I always take the putter away and tell the person to get set up in the posture that, that we advocate. And obviously we want the weight balanced over the ankles. We're gonna have hinge from the hip. Our, we're gonna be in the box. So our shoulders are gonna be retracted so that we can rock our torso, rock our shoulder blades back and forth to do the majority of the putting stroke. So that's how you get rid of having a really handsy stroke and all these things. It all starts with posture. So I would have you set up first. So is there anything dramatically different from like setting up to a, a regular iron shot? Not really, not really, no. Uh, I'll always have you stand straight up first. So I'll have you get in the box. So go ahead and shrug your shoulders straight up and straight down. And we were just talking about this just a moment ago. So you had another uh, request for getting in the, pot, the box. And so this would be a simple place to cover it. Right. Um, you mentioned that when you were first trying to get in the box and get connected to your core that you had trouble elevating your shoulder, elevating your arms. W why was that exactly? Well, I think what, what I seem to find is I, I would get in the box, what I thought was the box. I got the, the chest out and I can feel attached in the back. I'm probably overdoing it a little, probably a little over engaged partly. Yeah. But I think what happened was since I was only able to get my arms up to here, I couldn't figure out how to do the shoulder elevation. Right, right. But after working with this for a little bit while, uh, a little bit and learning a little bit more about it, I think what happened was I engaged my pecs in this. And when I engaged my pecs trying to push my arms to the floor, there's a, a lot of tension in here now and I can't elevate my shoulders properly. Gotcha. Yeah, you don't need to do that. And I think a lot of people take this, the idea of getting connected to the core and they want to they wanna overdo it. They want to have this feeling of being really rigid and locked in. It's not like that at all. It's a simple shrug your shoulders up straight up towards your ears and pull them straight down and let them re and pull them back a little bit so that you do have your chest up you got to pull your belly button in and so once you're in neutral posture it's not that you're trying to pull your hands down as far as you can go obviously you're not going to be able to move you're going to be rigid and tense and so what you should feel is that your shoulders are just back but your arms are completely relaxed they're just neutrally hanging from your shoulder socket so it's no problem 
to raise your arms. So yeah, if you feel like you're trying to flex like Arnold or something, you're definitely overdoing it. So once we get you in good posture, so we get you in the box, then we have you hinged from the hip. And most people will tend to kind of bend from the waist here. So why don't you show what that looks like? Go to the top and just kind of, yeah. That's how most people set up. And so his belt's gonna be pretty level here. And eventually, he's gonna feel a lot, of, a lot more strain here. Ready. Okay, so now let's stand up and let's actually hinge from the hip. As he hinges from the hip, notice his belt's gonna angle down a little bit. This is just keeping his spine in neutral. And now his arms can hang down and his shoulder blades are retracted here. And now he can simply learn to stroke the putter by just pulling his shoulder blades back and forth. And that's what creates the basic movement. So he gets rid of getting a handsy, you know, armsy stroke and allows the hands to just do fine tuning and correction and, and releasing and those types of things. So once you're in that posture, what I'll do is I'll then bring the putter up to somebody, but I have them stay in their posture and don't try and grab the putter from me. Let me bring it to you. And then what we'll find is that's your ideal posture. And now to bring your hand on the putter, this may even be a little bit short for you. So as you bring your other hand on, we can start to see that you're actually having to move out of the posture that you were in before in order to get into gripping the putter. So you're, what most people do is they grab the putter and they let their putter dictate their posture. You want to do it the other way around. So if I take this away from you again and you get into your ideal posture where you feel perfectly balanced, you're hinged from the hips, we can start to see that this is right on the edge, maybe being a half inch short. So you're having to kind of reach down for it a little bit. You'll have your shoulder blades protract a little bit to do that. And so that's the, the biggest key. Now, like I said, for most people, they end up with putters that are way too long for them. And so they end up in this really upright posture like this. We call this the, the puppy dog hump in the fire hydrant posture. So you don't want to look like this when you're gripping your putter. So once you get hinged over, now you can swing the putter on a natural arc. The more upright you are, the more round that arc's going to become. So you're in good posture there, and then we can just make a normal stroke. So the other thing is that because you're pretty tall, and when you grip the putter, when I dropped the ball, you had the, the uh, your eyes were a little bit outside the line, right? So just right on the outside. So because of that, that's another indication that that putter's a little short for you. And again, that's not the typical scenario. Most people have putters that are way too long. But that would uh, uh, give us another indication that you're in your ideal posture, your arms are hanging neutral, they're supported by the muscles in the back, so your arms can stay nice and relaxed. But you need a little bit longer putter in order to be able to get into your ideal posture, maintain it, where you can, you know, you feel like if you're supporting your body correctly, you should be able to practice for a long time and not have back pain and neck pain and all those things. So, so that's the basic gist of how we do a, a pretty quick putter fitting. Okay. Makes sure. sense? Absolutely. Cool. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So with that, we're going to conclude our uh, first pilot episode. What we'll do is we'll go out and we'll post a topic on the forum, and we look for everybody's feedback, whether you're a regular member of the forums or if you need to visit rotaryswing.com and sign up for the golf forum. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Give us any kind of feedback you want, what you like, what you didn't, what you'd like to see, if you have any more requests for what you'd like to see uh, Chuck cover and, and uh, have us talk about, that'd be much appreciated. Also look for, we're, we're gonna have a little bit more of a discussion type segment next time where we sit down and talk about something that may or may not be directly related to golf instruction. I think I'm gonna throw that out there on the forum and get some of your feedback so we can incorporate that into our discussion next time. Perfect. Great, thanks again everybody. Look forward to seeing you next week. All right.